Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the Bible study portion of RT Ministries. Um, this week we're on Acts 3.17. Acts 3.17. And last time we were listening to Peter's preaching. Um, yeah, he was telling a lot of truth. And he uh, he's just revealing the true Christ to them, reminding them who, raised, who was raised from the dead. And, you know, we do a lot of that today. All of us should be doing that. Not necessarily preaching in front of thousands of people or hundreds of people, but you should be talking about Jesus Christ, who came back from the dead. And our message is the same as Peter's was, but these were for the Jews that put Jesus to death. All right, let's pick it up with 17, Acts three seventeen. And now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance, just as your rulers did also. Now, there's a lot of Jews in that day who really didn't know what Jesus was. They did it in ignorance. They thought they were doing God a favor. Um, even Paul, before he was saved, was thought he was doing God a favor by killing Christians. So, and putting them in jail. And So, the, they did a lot of things in, in ignorance. Now, ignorance is doing something without knowing, you know, the full extent of what you're and who you're doing it to. And there are some ignorant people out there, and get, that's who you need to get the message to. You know, ignorance is not a, a excuse. It is a condition. And that's why when you talk to somebody, you make them unignorant. <laughs> you know, you, may, you, you let them know who the true Christ is. Some people don't know. There's a generation now growing up that wasn't in church. You know, when I grew up, just about everybody knew who Jesus was. They knew something about the Bible. Now... It's not that way anymore. People, it's not that unusual. People don't know nothing about the Bible. So there's a lot of ignorance out there. Wake people up. If they, t if they say something about Christ, say something about God that isn't true, correct them. Make them unignorant. 18, but the things which God announced before him by the mouth of all the prophets. And that, you know, Jesus fulfilled everything the prophet said. All the way from Moses. We're going to come to that soon. Moses said, God will raise up a prophet like me. A human, you know, a person, the Messiah, he's coming. God said all the way beforehand through through the book of Isaiah, through the book, of, it's all through the Old Testament. So this is nothing new. Through the mouth of all his prophet, that his Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. You know, God doesn't work on our timetable. One day may seem like a lot to us or a year or two, but it's not a lot to God, right? One day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. So it's only really been two days since Christ died. You know, and a thousand years is only a day to God, but a day is only a thousand years. There's no concept of time to God. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but everything he told about Christ, he fulfilled. He brought Jesus. He fulfilled the whole thing. He said he was going to bring a Messiah to save his people, and he did. But they put him to death. 19, therefore, Here's the message. Now, this has always been the message of the Bible. Therefore, repent. Turn around. The word repentance means stop and go in a different direction. And this is what's missing in part of the... Most people tell people what they think is the gospel. They're missing the part about repenting and turning to Christ. They usually tell the big, Jesus saved you, God loves you. That's not the gospel. It's part of the gospel. But repentance is always part of the gospel. Therefore, repent, turn around, stop what you're doing, and return. So that your sins may be wiped away. There you go. You know, when you do repent and come to Christ, your sins are wiped away. They're blotted out. It's a marvelous... Uh, every Christian should be doing jumping jacks every day because their sins are wiped out. God looks at you and he doesn't see any sin. It's an amazing condition to be in. Because when you die, you know, when you die, you have to be sinless. Right? If you die with any sin, you're going to hell. That your sins repent and return. Repent and return. So your sins may... So they... Uh, your sins may be wiped out and wiped away in order that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of our Lord. And certainly God does refresh when he saves. When he saves and refreshes you, it brings you brings you back to what it should be, back to the relationship that you should have with God. He brings you to. 
I don't know of any better feeling than being saved. You know, and there's a lot of distractions in America that you can pull away from just the simple things of being saved. You have a lot to be thankful for for just that. Just that alone, if there's nothing else going on right in your life, but you're saved, you have enough to be thankful for for the rest of your life. If you have enough to rejoice for, you have enough to, that sustain, it should sustain you the rest of your life. So be, always be, with your heart, be thankful. And if you can't think of anything else and your life is terrible and this is going wrong and that's going wrong, then thank God for the salvation that you have and the refreshing that has come to you. 20. That he may send Jesus Christ the appointed for you. And that he may send Jesus the Christ appointed for you. <laughs> you know, you pray that... that Whenever you pray for a loved one to be saved, you, you, you pray to God and say, have the, you know, please save them, have the Lord save them. You pray that the Lord comes to them. And here too, 21. Whom heaven must receive until the period of restoration of all things about which God spoke of by the mouth of his holy prophet from ancient times. It says, whom heaven must receive. Jesus went to heaven, sat down at the right hand until the period of restoration of all things. The restoration of all things is Jesus Christ coming back, dealing with sin. You know, we got the book of Revelations to, to show what Jesus Christ does to this world. And he comes back and he deals with Satan. He deals with sinners and he casts them all in the lake of fire, hell, along with death, along with Hades, death and Hades. He casts that in the lake of fire too. All that, all that lie, the Bible says, all that, all the sexual immoral, all the people that rejected him, he cast alive in the lake of fire. And he restores all things, new heavens, new earth, all that without sin. Remember, creation is groaning, trying to be relieved of sin. There's a burden of sin on nature itself. Time of restoration. We'll be there. We're coming back with the Lord to rule and reign for a thousand years on, on this earth. So we'll be back here on this earth. If you die, you'll be back here on this earth. 22, Moses said, Here's a quote from Moses. The Lord will raise up for you a prophet like me. And the key is like me. What does he mean by like me? A human. From your brethren. You know, the Jews should have recognized Christ. They were waiting for him in that day. And they're waiting for him today. They should have recognized him. He fulfilled all the prophets. He said, I'm the one. John the Baptist named him. John was, called, was in the wilderness banking away from the Lord. Jesus said, I am he. You know, they asked, who are you? And he always claimed to be who he was. And they never believed him. They should have believed him. You should have believed him. And people you know should have believed him. You know, if your family members do not believe him and they're still unsaved, they have no excuse, right? They should have believed him. God's going to punish all that do not believe the gospel. Do not come to Christ. We all have no excuse. He said, from your brother, to him you shall give heed to everything he says to you. See, even the even Moses says he's going to raise up somebody like me and give heed to everything he says to you. And they weren't giving heed to anything he said to them. They were guilty. They had the Messiah right in front of them and they should have recognized Jesus fulfilled all of the prophecies. Instead, they hated him and wanted to kill him. Now, there's some people out there that you know that don't like Christ. You know, anybody who's not, he said, if you're not with me, you're against me. That's a pretty heavy statement. Doesn't matter if you're nice. If you're not with him, you're against him. So give, people need to give heed to everything he says. 23. And it will be that every soul that does not heed that prophet, here it is, if you do not heed that prophet, if you do not heed Jesus Christ, shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. This is how important Jesus Christ is. If you don't, if you do not give heed to what he's saying, or to him and himself, you'll be utterly destroyed. And this is, you're not annihilated, you're cast, you're cast alive in the lake of fire. You've got to give heed to Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's God. Because he's the Messiah. Because he's the only way to heaven. 
And likewise, all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and his successors onward also announce these days. He said, here's the other prophets from spoken from Samuel, Samuel and all the successors onward, meaning everybody, also announced these days of Jesus Christ Messiah. The old, they had no excuse, all the prophets, and they knew the Old Testament. It is you, let's see, verse 25, it is you who are the sons of the prophets and of, of the covenant which God made with your father, saying to Abraham, okay? They're the sons of the prophets he was talking to. In your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Here it is. In the, he promised that in their seed, I meaning he just said the crowd, the crowd that Peter was talking to, he called them that you are the seeds. Here's the prophet. Here's the prophecy. Um, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Like, from among you, there's going to come somebody that's going to bless all the world. Again, they should have caught the Messiah. 26. For you first, God raised up his servant and sent him and sent, <clears throat> and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. For you first. This is for the Jews first. Jesus, God raised up his servant, Jesus, for the Jews first and sent him to bless you. He was supposed to be a blessing to the Jewish people. Instead, they killed him. By turning every one of you from your wicked ways. That's the whole message. Jesus Christ came to save his people, to turn them from their wicked ways and bless them. Instead, Israel was cursed. And they're still being cursed today. Because of their rejection of Jesus Christ. Listen, rejecting Jesus is no small matter. If you reject him in any fashion, in any time, destruction is for you. The wrath of God remains. And according to John 3, the wrath of God remains on you. That means it's always been there, but it remains. The only way you can take that wrath. Jesus came to save you from the wrath to come. All he has is point out to the Jews, the prophets, all the prophets from the Old Testament named me, told, me, told you that I was coming. And from among, among your brethren, people like you, there was going to be raised up one like Moses, a person that was going to bless you and turn you from your wicked ways, and they rejected it all. They had nothing to do with them. Well, again, this is the church starting. This is Peter's sermon. We're going to see what happens when you tell the truth in the world. If the world likes it or they don't. They don't still don't like it today, and they, they never did in this day either. Satan don't like it either when you tell the truth. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.